Hello and welcome everybody. Today we are speaking about the full moon in Pisces on the 1st of September 2020. And when you look at the chart, it looks actually very complicated, but I'll try my best to break down all the different elements that are our life right now and we'll simplify it. And you will see ultimately it's very simple. And that's also the theme or the topic for this full moon in Pisces. Ultimately, it's not up to you. And that really hits the core of the Pisces energy. And I'm actually happy that I'm recording that a little bit earlier than the actual full moon because every time a full moon in Pisces comes along, I just find it very difficult to capture the essence of what's alive. And I'm never really happy with the words I'm finding because it never really catches what is alive. And that's also the Pisces full moon. Like it just embraces everything and it's so inclusive that there is actually so many things simultaneously alive that you cannot really find the real essence of it because everything is just moving and flowing so let's begin to speak a little bit more about the full moon in pisces but before that i also want to say thank you so much we have been hitting 300 subscribers in the last month i have only started with this kind of project on youtube and it really has become something that i really like to do just to share and let's just see also how many people it reaches i've been really surprised and i'm really grateful for all the support for your feedback and just to see that there are like-minded people out there that have a common interest and that finding help and just meaning in what i'm having to share so i really hope this is just the beginning and I also would love it if you are sending me more feedbacks, especially if you not just say thank you, that was really nice, or I really liked it. But actually, if you could become more specific and say what it actually touched in you, like what specifically was it helpful for in your life? And that would also just help me much more to relate to you personally than just have a general statement. Because I hope that this is helpful in itself or that was nice and it resonates. But then I would also get to know you a little bit better. So send me a private message or share it publicly, whatever feels right for you. And I'm more than happy to get back to you. Because after all, I'm just speaking to myself in front of a camera, all right? <laughs> That's the age that we are moving into and it's becoming more and more like that if we like it or not. So we have all to do a little effort in order to keep real human interactions alive. So let me break down a little bit this full moon in Pisces. And when we look at it, really don't get overwhelmed by all the lines. It's not complicated. I will share with you what it means. But we have to understand basically that two weeks ago, remember, two weeks ago, we had a new moon in Leo. And when we have a Leo theme, a life in us, then it's really supporting us or showing us that we are actually the creator of life or life creates through us. And that means that it actually being a creator means like we can give birth to a child, we can play, we can be special and that means also a little bit egoistic because we are participating in life and finding that uniqueness or that specialness, that light within ourselves, that's really the Leo. And because last two weeks, um, and that's still the case now, you know, Mars is very active, it's actually close to going into retrograde on the 9th of September, so that already means it slows down, and when a planet slows down, it is the closest to the Earth. So that's also why you have seen in the last month so many NASA and SpaceX missions that are going to send their missiles or ships towards the Mars because it is actually much closer now to the Earth and that means that is really a good moment to save some fuel to actually make their projects some millions cheaper just because it's a bit closer. And when we have a retrograde, then that theme in ourselves is a time when we have to work on that theme in specific. So. Remember, Mars was there close and Lilith, and that means Lilith brings up some qualities in us that have been hidden or that have been taboo or we couldn't lift them out. And we have been forced to feel them in order. What do we need in order to be growing in our unique individual personality? So that has been maybe been waking up in a little bit an uncomfortable or forceful way. And that's also because Uranus plays a big element in that. And when you look at Uranus, so that went retrograde on the 16th of August. So that's a few days ago. But remember, when a planet slows down, then it becomes slower and closer and becomes more alive in us. 
And when you look at the chart, Uranus is actually trining that Saturn, Jupiter and Pluto here in Capricorn, which are all retrograde as well, by the way, but these are collective planets. So we really as a collective have to work through a lot of stuff right now, as you can feel. And then these two are trining the Sun in Virgo. So you already see like there's Taurus, there's Capricorn and there's Virgo's three Earth signs. So that means in a very practical way, Uranus is shaking us up and that can maybe be that can be that something shakes up in you that you have changing your opinion you have lost your job or somebody actually quits your job or maybe you have lost something of your work that simply like in many ways can shake you up and then Uranus is also about like hey take some time to contemplate on that for yourself because something needs to change can you see that can you feel that and Uranus is quite an erupting force so if you would speak on a collective level, it's more like natural forces like earthquakes, like volcanoes, like heavy rains, like floods, like all these disasters that we are feeling, that's much more on a collective level. And by the way, we have some construction noise going on here, but I hope you not getting bothered by that. So these Uranian forces now really push us to change. And that is what's going on right now. This change is actually something that we feel on a collective level very restricted. Remember, I was speaking about that two weeks ago, the Saturn here that makes us think and take apart through time some of the dynamics or the principles and the hierarchy and the system that we are living in. And Pluto is also looking at it on an even much deeper level, on a much more profound level where it's really taking it apart. And Jupiter is actually magnifying some of the negativity that we're seeing in hierarchy or corporations in our economy and just the way we are living through trying to get the most out of our environment. And that means right now, I think for a lot of us, we are all looking for change. And when we're speaking about that, then simply like we want to go travel somewhere internationally. We're going to want, want to go out of our house and do something. We want to go to a party. We want to go to a ceremony. We want to have fun. We want to meet friends. So we want to go outside. Now, what we see right now, what's happening is like there is a lot of international flights that are destinations are simply not reachable. So then what are we able to do? Well, some of the restaurants are not open or some of the places that we would like to eat food are not available. That means we have to do things ourselves. And that means we have to look for the change much closer in our environment that we are used to. That means a lot of people have recently just started to do a little project in their house, some renovation, something that they have wanted to do since a long time. And they start to do these little changes around them. And then more and more what you start to do is you're coming closer and closer to yourself where you're actually realizing, well, the last thing I can really do is change something within myself. And that change really has forced us to then realize, actually brings us back to that Mars capacity where we feel inside of us like, actually, I wanted since a long time to change the direction of my profession or since a long time I wanted to actually change my relationship. Something was just really stagnant in the dynamic between me and my partner, between me and my mother, between me and my father, my family, my children and my, f my close friend. And I, I just came to the place where I couldn't travel or could do big changes outside anymore but these little changes now happening within myself and they come to an expression they come to an eruption through Uranus and they need to be expressed and it also comes to ourselves where we are realizing what do we want to grow into and that can be very scary because when we are doing changes normally changes come from a place where all things have to go. Well, this doesn't just work anymore for me. I just don't feel comfortable in that way. I just don't know yet what I'm growing into. I just don't know yet exactly what's the step lying ahead. But at the same time that we are doing these changes, we're starting to feel when we take time by ourselves or when we still have erupted something and then after the pain, after the hurt, after the aggression, after the defense, after the challenge, we can feel into it and we can realize what's actually the potential, the quality underneath that's lying there in an essence as an 
unknown <laughs> or an uncharted territory where we not exactly know, but we can feel suddenly what we actually need. And that's right now the theme. Like Mars in Aries says, well, I know what I want. I can, I know my direction and I want to have it right now. I would like to have that change right now. I want to go to that country. I want to be with that other person. I want to get that job. I want to get this next education. I want to have that tool. I want to have that space for myself or that situation in my relationship or whatever actually it is. I want it right now. And Venus here is saying, well, I feel very emotionally, intimately what I need right now. But then you see like Venus is opposing to Jupiter, Pluto and Saturn and there's this collecting force that says on the outside mm -mm, not right now, it's not time yet and that's like where the Mars is like <clears throat> but I need it, I need it right now and because Mars is actually so close to retrograde it's actually a moment where we have to realize it's not a moment to just be strong and pushy and forceful even if we know what we want but it's almost like seeing the bigger picture to this Iranian force this this trine of like seeing what doesn't work anymore and feel therefore the inner aggression the inner annoyance the inner pain that brings these themes up and there's also part in us that feels like what actually we would like to have but we also acknowledge that some things in a very practical way it's simply not the right moment it's simply not the right time and that's exactly when we can say and there's a fear in us that what if i'm losing that part that i know i need but on a bigger picture we could say well i feel it so deeply that i can find words for it and that's Mercury here. Mercury is actually trining the collective. It's actually here also in a sextile to Venus. And it's a very good moment and that will become even more clear in the next month or in two weeks when we have a new moon in Virgo, when we become clearer in the details that we need. But right now it's much more a moment where we can feel and become clear what are the elements that we need, but then actually come to a place where we really honor the moon and the Neptune in Pisces because that would be then well I can feel that this is coming and I know the elements that I need and because I know them I can trust that this will come in its own time I don't have to push the situation to get me what I want and I will speak much more about that when I speak in specific about that Mars retrograde that is happening actually on the 9th of September and I will make a video just for that because that's in a theme in itself but when we have a Mars retrograde it's not about getting what I want it's not anymore that we can just do what we need so it's almost this power struggle where it's like well are you actually able to let go of your power that you used to have or your strength and actually maybe resign or adjust and that can be a time of frustration because it's not anymore working just getting the usual way or just saying well that's my position and from that position I can manipulate you or just ask for what I need but actually it's much more an inner process where we almost have to say well now it's actually a time to cultivate patience to cultivate breathing and feeling in what is that saying within me and then coming to a place where we can actually become flexible again and, and change like and, and understand our own boundaries and then actually express and share that rather than just forcefully go for what we used to get and that in that sense is exactly this theme in Pisces with the moon there and the Neptune there because when we speak about Pisces in its very essence then it's about okay we see all these elements but there's no need that we need to be pushy because there's something bigger that's moving us which we don't even understand it's a trust in something that we can feel through us and with this I'm speaking about a very intimate experience this can be an altered state of consciousness that you are having through lovemaking or something that makes you really happy that you're forgetting everything it can even be work where you're so much in it that you're losing the concept of me as a person and that you're simply forgetting to eat it can be an experience through psychedelics 
uh, but ultimately it's something that all humans actually have in, his, in their very essence that we are just part of this cosmic journey and all of us are an individual color dot or a part in the play of life that we're expressing ourselves. And the Pisces full moon is a reminder that even though we are struggling, trying so hard to do the right and next step, that everything is happening in its own time, in its own way, and everything is happening right now, right here in this very moment. And we don't have to plan the future and the past. It's much more coming back in a alignment <laughs> or in a flow of what already is. And therefore, it's not about understanding who we are, because that would be trying to capture something that is flowing. It's almost like holding something still that its very nature is actually flowing. So in that coming back to terms with that flow state, that moment of intuitiveness, that place of softness and gentleness, it's also a time where we're allowing life to flow through us again. And sometimes we can realize in these times beautiful, deep experience that everything is actually alive and flows continuously and everlasting, even though we're sometimes afraid of the future or annoyed about the past. Or we can also realize why are we stuck? Where are we trying so hard? Why are we so pushy? What are about our expectations that need to be fulfilled instead of actually allowing some outer influences to come and move us in a way that we don't want that actually up but for the better of us. And in that way, the Pisces full moon is a beautiful reminder that life is much more complicated, much more complex than we will ever be able to understand. But it is ultimately not a up to us. That is ultimately something that we can give over and trust and lay our expectations or wishes upon and hoping for the best. So with this I really hope <laughs> that you are having a beautiful full moon in Pisces and we will see each other again for the new moon in Virgo here. Until then I just wish you a beautiful time. Take care. Goodbye.